today we're going to take a quick look at how to dimension with the uh, free version of SketchUp Make and more importantly we're going to learn how to deal with all those hollow walls that you have left over by using a tool called Create Group from Slice and we're going to use that to create a pochet layer that uh, will cover up all the empty hollow spaces left behind by SketchUp. So first of all let's get ready to make a floor plan. So I've got this kind of perspective view. So you want to go to three different things. Let's hit the zoom extents. I want to go to the top view and then I want to go to camera and I want to toggle off of the default perspective to parallel projection. And now we're looking straight down on our model. If you don't have these views um, showing up, you can go to View Toolbars and you want to find the views. And this looks a little differently on um, the Mac, but you can follow through and find them on your toolbar options there also. Now we want to take um, and put everything that we don't want on the dimension layer on its own layer. So I've created layers for furniture and I've put the furniture on there. And I've also created kitchen cabinet layer and kitchen appliance layer, window layer. Um, the reason you want to turn off your windows is when you cut a section plane through these windows you can see all the tiny little lines that make up the window instead of a nice clean window um, symbol and the same with the doors. And then I'm going to go back to the top view and I've already made a scene with this but if you um, would like to you can go to window scenes and just hit the little plus sign and type in floor plan and then you'll have a floor plan tab that you can uh, go back to as you maneuver around your, uh, your model. All right, um, now I've got our model set up how we need it to be for the floor plan. I'm just going to orbit out of this view because it's easier to use the section plane uh, in this oblique view. So the section plane tool is done with the camera tools for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And you'll see as I move it around that it's going to flip to orient itself to whatever face that it's closest to. So we want it oriented to this top face. Um, so I'm going to have the green so it's like a little green transparent thing in the top of our model facing down. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now don't panic, don't go away um, because you're like, what happened to my model? And our section plane is just cutting through the floor so it's only showing what's below the floor right now. If you go ahead and click on the section plane and that means it's now the active section plane and then one can use the move tool. So I'm hitting M for move and I can move it up and you'll see that our model reappears. So we want it to be somewhere where we're cutting through the doors and windows. Like four feet down is the typical space, um, but it doesn't particularly matter. And then I can right click and say align view, which is going to line it with the section plane that we've made. And now you see kind of this gray um, section plane showing over everything. So we don't want to actually see the section plane now. So if you go to view, you'll see there's the section plane and the section cut. I'm going to uncheck section plane. And now I can just see the nice clean section cut. So I'm going to go ahead and update the floor plan so it'll save all these settings so we can easily go back to it. Actually, I'm going to do one other thing first, sorry. Um, on the styles, I'm going to go to the hidden line style and that is going to make our model just into a black and a white model. Again, if you're not seeing this toolbar, if you go to view toolbars, this is the styles toolbar. So now we should have a nice clean model that we can go ahead and dimension. So let's go ahead and update our floor plan again to um, reflect the section cut that we've made. So I'm going to right click on the floor plan and just say update. And I'm going to show you a tool that you can use to pochet the walls, which is always a problem in SketchUp because basically what you're looking at is you're looking inside the hollow walls. So let's go back to this floor plan view. The other thing that I want to show you is that if you notice you can see and as I get closer, zoom in, you can see this more, these kind of double lines. And what that actually is is the top of this crown or this base molding that I've made. Uh, if I would have been thinking ahead, I could have made the base molding as a group and then turned it off while we're doing this. 
but instead I'm just going to leave it and I'm just going to make sure that when I dimension, I dimension from the top of the walls and not from the base molding itself. So first of all, let's go back to uh, creating this pochade view. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the side view and I'm going to go back so we can view our section plane. I'm going to choose it and then I'm going to right click and there's another option called create group from slice. So if I click on that, it doesn't really seem like much has happened, but if I select the section plane again and move it up, you'll see that there is actually this line all the way around. And if I select that, you'll see that it's actually a group that was made exactly where that section cut was. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and I'm going to take the move tool and I'm going to move it off to the side. So the section plane, right now this group is right where the section plane cuts through. So when we go to the section plane view, it's going to be cut through and be gone also. So you want to just select it and then I'm just going to move it down just so we can continue to see it. So if we were just doing a quick dimension floor plan over here and weren't, aren't worrying about the pochain, that's when uh, this hidden line style works great. But it's not going to let us show the colors of the material, so I need to go back to the shaded. I'm going to leave off shaded with texture so at least the floor becomes just a one background color. So you can see we've got a few problems here is that there's no indication whatsoever of the windows. And also if we try to select this and if I go to double click to get in the edit mode of the group, you'll see that SketchUp doesn't recognize that this is a face. So we need to deal with both of those issues first. So again, make sure you're in the edit mode. First of all, I'm just going to draw in a rectangle for the window. And then I'm going to take the line tool and I'm going to draw from midpoint to midpoint. And that's kind of the uh, symbol for a window. I'm going to go ahead and select that and then I can make it a group and then I can move and copy that down to the next window and I can scale that to fit. Again, just drag until I snap on the endpoint and I'm going to move and copy it over to the window over here. Same thing, scale that to fit. So you'll see just in making this first window that um, some of the faces filled in. So I'm going to try to just go ahead and trace over um, from end to end here and got that to fill in. Same thing, let's just see if I trace one of the lines. I got that to fill in and uh, let's see if we can get it to work here. So again, remember it's the same theory. If you just trace one of the edges, then SketchUp will usually recognize what to do at that point. So I'm over in the materials palette. I'm going to pick a color, um, not the darkest black, but maybe the next one down. Uh, maybe even this next gray, and I'm going to use that to poche in these walls. And if you think that looks a little dark after you've done it, remember you can also go to the Edit tab and lighten it up a little bit more. You can't unfortunately pick a uh, pochade material to put in here or not with the default things that come with SketchUp. Um, some people import a pochade pattern to put it in so that's another option when you're um, filling in this material. Let's click on the floor plan tab and now we can pick our group and move it from the endpoint in the group to the endpoint in this group and now we have a nice pochéed uh, floor plan, except I moved mine to the bottom of the group, so let's move it up to the top edge so you can see um, this little window shape. So if this floor color is bugging you too much um, and you're really trying to make a detailed floor plan, you could also just paint it white um, for this um, dimensioning thing and then paint it back. We're just going to leave it like here for now. Another strategy that some people use uh, to get rid of pesky little details like uh, this floor color or um, the baseboard showing through is just to make a copy of your SketchUp model just for dimensioning. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go File, Save As, and just call it Condo for Dimensioning and hit Save. And then in this model, I can go ahead and just delete the baseboards.
And come over here. So and you can see because I pulled the baseboards out, I now have a hollow wall. So again, another reason to make them a group. Um, but again, I'll show you when we look down at that from the um, top floor plan view, you won't be able to see it. And then I can also go to the edit floor and I can select a white and make it white. And now when I go to this floor plan view, that might look like a much cleaner model for um, dimensioning. And I know the perfectionists out you out there are saying, um, I don't actually have any door swings. It's like, oh yeah. So I'm going to show you a great way to deal with that. It's the same thing if we actually had a 3D door in here and made a section cut through it. You'd see way too many lines and details. So I'm just going to go to the 3D warehouse and let's search for 2D door. And there's a couple sets of 2D doors in here. Um, these gut ones by Den Kim all have dimensions in which I don't like because they don't match SketchUp's dimensions. Um, so I'm going to download the 2D 2.6 door. You can see he also has a 2.8 door and a 3 foot door, but we can just scale the same one to fit wherever we want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and download that into my SketchUp model. So it needs to be, the door needs to be here, the swing needs to be in, so I need to figure out what I need to do to this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to rotate it because here's where the door opening is going to be. And then I need to flip it because I want the door to open in. And let's go ahead and move it from this end point to the midpoint in the group. And you can see it's a little too big for our door, so I'm going to hit S for scale. And I'm just going to snap it to fit. And then I want the pochette to match the rest of our model, so I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to use the bucket paint bucket tool, uh, the eyedropper to sample our pochet and hold on shift while I paint the group, and then go ahead and close the component. And then I'm going to go ahead while you're away and copy that door over to the bathroom and to the front door. All right, while you grabbed a drink of water, I first of all flipped the door so it opened this way, made a copy here, made a copy here, which all involves some flipping and rotating to make them fit. But now we have a pretty nice clean model um, for dimensioning. Okay, we're finally ready to pull a dimension string. Sheesh. So dimension tool, this looks like a little dimension string. It's pretty straightforward to use. Click on one endpoint, click on the second endpoint that you want to measure, pull down. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't just keep continuing. You have to click on the dimension again. And you pull down and you can snap to where you were before. Once they're here, they're just like anything else. You can move them again if you like. So you see we're getting all these crazy dimensions. So if you've been with us from the beginning, you know it's because uh, we just traced our floor plan, uh, unless you did the CAD method. So I'm going to look back at our original plan because I'm not stuck with these dimensions. I can change them to accurately reflect what um, they would be. And again, this is just because uh, we knew that um, we didn't this, need this to be exact. We we're just kind of using it for a furniture layout. But if I double click on a dimension, I can look up here and see it's 14 feet, 4 and 1 half inch. Oops, 14 feet, space 4 and 1 half inch. Same thing, this one should be 3 feet, and this one is 6 feet, 7 and 1 quarter inch. So another big uh, drawback of the dimensions again, and you can control this more with the paid version, is that if I zoom in and out, you can see um, the dimensions get uglier and more and more unreadable. So you can change the size of dimensions. You might try to print out um, one of the scale that you are going to be actually presenting and see how the dimensions look. But there are some things you can control about the dimensions up in the Window Model Info tab. And here there's a Dimensions um, tab is where I'm at. You can change um, the font, the font style, the size, and either points or height. But again, that's always relative to if it was actually a thing in SketchUp and 
um, it was that height. You can also change how the endpoints work, um, and it's kind of crazy how you have to do this. You want to go ahead and select the dimensions that you want, and then I'm, if I said I want these to have a closed arrow on the end, then I have to say update selected dimensions, and it would choose them all. I much prefer the slash, so I'm going to change them back to that. The other problem with dimensioning with SketchUp Make is, of course, when you start rotating around, um, the dimensions and the door swings are just like regular things in SketchUp, and they don't rotate to match your view. Um, so in some views, they don't make any sense whatsoever. So you do need to create a layer. I'm just going to create one layer of dimensions to put the dimensions and the door swings on for now. I might otherwise create a separate layer for the door swings, but just in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and oops, put them on the dimension layer for now. And turn that off. And actually, I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename it and call it AA. And I'm actually going to call it Floor Plan Dimensions because it's only for the floor plan. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna make a quick just elevation by using um, the section plane on the front and just to show you a couple more tools. I can also move this in, but say it was really the door, um, this wall over here that I wanted to make a section plane of. I can also right click on a section plane and reverse the cut. So wherever the section uh, plane is, it's going to show the opposite side of it. And then I can do the same thing. I can right click and say align view. I can hide the section um, plane itself. And here you can see where we have that little leftover cut from um, when we took away our base molding. So I'm just going to, with the line tool, uh, retrace one of those edges and then um, I can fill that in. I could also fix this little thing over here, but just to show you that I can now do the same thing as an elevation and dimension that as I needed. So again, all these things, if you have SketchUp Pro, if you're going to use SketchUp a lot, if it's your um, main formatting, notation, dimensioning tool that you're going to use, that would be a great time to upgrade to SketchUp Pro because you'll have a lot more ability to manipulate and just make it look better when you dimension or lay out a construction document. This video is just the beginning in a small part of my SketchUp Bootcamp class, a practical SketchUp training class designed for interior architects and designers. This course offers a thorough background in the SketchUp tools and techniques most important to design professionals creating interiors. The aim of this e-learning course is to systematically teach you a progression of tools so you understand how to quickly and efficiently integrate SketchUp into your workflow. There's eight hours of video that you can access at your own pace and as often as you like. To learn more, go to my website, seeddd.com, to the classes page.